Another unique trait in the immigrant families was the concept of colorism. Lighter skinned children were favoured, whereas darker skinned children would feel shame from their communities based on the colour of their skin. A remnant of the 3,000 year old caste system in which the upper and lower castes almost always lived in segregated colonies. The water wells were not shared, Brahmins would not share food or drink with the Shudras and one was restricted to marry within their own caste. This social hierarchy was later consolidated by the British Raj, merging the British class system with the pre-existing caste system to consolidate their governance. As we saw in the previous Punjabi Law series, embedded within the South Asian community, there is a long history with ties to the caste system and social hierarchies with the arrival of the Aryans in the Indus Valley. This led to the cultural programming of fair skin is rich and darker skin is poor with low social status. There was one story on BBC Asian Network Radio that responded to this trait quite nicely. One day, the granddaughter of a UK immigrant came to him and asked him why people made fun of her darker skin and how it made her feel sad. The grandfather took her out in the daytime and asked her to look up at the sky. The grandfather then told the granddaughter to look up at the sky again that very same night. It was dark, the moon and stars were shining and the grandfather said while pointing at a star, that is you, you shine bright. This gave the child confidence at a young age and let her feel comfortable in her own skin. And so it's stories like these that remind us that kindness should be used over prejudice no matter what generation or our culture. Meanwhile, externally from the household environment, at school, many girls were bullied or called names due to South Asian genetics, having visibly more hair on their arms, etc. And as the decades progressed, racism was hidden more covertly in schools and workplaces. Isolation was also common among ethnic minorities studying in higher education. This was especially seen in the first South Asian students who were often the first in their family to attend university. They were often from neighbourhoods which had now supported a high concentration of South Asians. Being surrounded by a different culture and community in a less diverse setting causes young adults to feel alienated and isolated. In some cases this caused lack of self-esteem and mistrust towards their peers and institutions. In turn, school choice by some parents due to economic and social factors drove higher ethnic segregation and decreased integration and assimilation in some communities. This ultimately impacts the perspectives of future generations and the cohesion of a community as a whole. Meanwhile, in India, during 1966 and 1977, the East Punjab had been further split into Haryana, Himachal Pradesh and modern-day Punjab. And in the 1980s, a drug epidemic started amongst the youth, leaving many families broken. At the same time, many other youth started to apply for permanent residence abroad, particularly in Canada, to work. In 1984, Punjab had its own story with growing tensions between Jarnel Singh Pindravala and the Prime Minister Indra Gandhi. The Khalistan movement ultimately led to media blackouts and water electricity being cut off by the Indian government. And finally, tanks storming the sacred Golden Temple complex. This lasted a besieging of six days and killed hundreds of civilians including women and children pilgrims. <laughs> the 
Immigrants in the UK watch this feeling helpless, hearing the news from the Western media. Some were reminded of their own violent experiences during the horrors of the 1947 partition in the colonial British Raj. The 1984 events eventually led to mass rioting in India, which led to the genocide of 3000 Sikhs who were killed and burned alive by mobs in Delhi. And around 10,000 more were killed in 40 cities around India. शायद वो लोकानु मेरे लंबे बाल पसंद नहीं थे जी। इस वास्ते मम्मी ने मेरे बाल कट दिते। Just like in their history, instead of carrying a burden of anger, some Sikhs responded to the pain and suffering inflicted on them with compassion and continuing their selfless service. The virtue behind this is that the sufferer is truly contented by practicing forgiving and through the act of forgiving, the sufferer is truly healed themselves. Declassified files were later found by Phil Miller in 2014 in the UK National Archive. This showed the association between Margaret Thatcher's UK government and India's 1984 attack on the Golden Temple. The more Britain gave advice to the Indian government to suppress the Sikhs, the more the Congress party in India was likely to buy British weapons. This was because the UK government did not want Westland, which made military helicopters for the UK, to go out of business. And so these commercial interests and arms deals were questionably at conflict with human rights. Additionally, the British army had a file of what advice the British government gave to India. However, this was destroyed 25 years after it was written and not preserved for the archive. The UK government commented that key parts of this file are conveyed in other places. In the decades that followed the 1980s, the diaspora faced new issues and resurfaced old ones. Such examples include casteism and prejudice between non-agricultural and agricultural castes, or juts and non-juts. And of course, recent misinformation on WhatsApp and social media, causing many ethnic minorities to mistrust and refuse the COVID-19 vaccine. Recent interesting conflicts also arise, such as interfaith marriages, where in Gurdwaras, Weddings have been forcibly stopped. One side believes it would be dishonouring the Sikh principles. It would be disrespectful to allow the marriage of a couple who do not fully understand the meaning of their marriage proceedings. Therefore, this sacred ceremony should be protected. While another side of the community believes Sikhism is more inclusive and so should be open to anyone to be married in the eyes of the religion without being forcibly stopped. However, there are also common factors uniting the community. For example, seva, selfless humanitarian service to feed the hungry through longer, and the community around the world united to stand for farmers' livelihoods in Punjab, and also the unity in the South Asian and other communities against racial discrimination and for justice and equality. This struggle of the balance between liberty and security is replicated across all the cultures and societies of the world today. As more generations came along, there became an increasing gradient between the balance of the Eastern and Western cultures. This depended on their parents' values, who were also born outside of their ancestral homelands. By the third and fourth generations, this created wide cultural differences within the same community, not only between generations, but also within them. And so, there is a constant balance between individualism, which brings independence, but also loneliness, and collectivism, which brings support, but also judgments. 
These cross-cultural values are being wrestled with in many of the immigrants' descendants' households today.